Howdy, Brother Damon, Damon Chief Jones. Well, it turns out I got a little extra time, so I thought I'd just go ahead and whip out this part two JFK uh, cop tales JFK part two. I think that's what I call it. I have to look back at the title of the other one. Anyway, I uh, after I do my videos, I try and look at them and see, you know, probably 25% of the time or more. I'll find I misspoke myself on something. I, I meant to say one word instead of another. Uh, I hope you can figure out when I misspeak myself what I meant to say. But if you got a question, you can always put it in the comment. Did you mean this or did you mean that? And I'll, I'll answer it. But anyway, I'll try and remember where I picked off. And it was about uh, uh, JFK and people that... Uh, worked with him and knew him personally uh, uh, some of his detail agents and and uh, people that actually worked with him I'll tell you about uh, see what's his name Abraham Bolden the first black Secret Service agent that was handpicked by Kennedy to work in the White House now I haven't met him eye to eye. I've talked to him on the phone a few times and we've communicated a, a lot of times and I worked very, very hard and wrote papers to congressmen and to senators and Obama when he was sitting up at the White House for a presidential pardon for Abraham Bolton. Okay, he got uh, jacked up. You know, the white agents in the Secret Service didn't want no black agent around on the uh, presidential detail, but Kennedy handpicked him. And in fact, he uh, he knew about uh, things that was gonna happen in Chicago that didn't happen in Chicago, wind up happening in Dallas, if I, if I recall right. But it's been a year, probably a year or better since we talked and we had a lot of discussions. Of course, I talked to so many people all the time about so many things. I uh, my, my wife says I, I can't just have one battery for a dang phone. I've got to have a, a, a phone battery and a backup battery just to go through a normal 12 to 16 hour day because constantly, if I ain't calling somebody, somebody's calling me or I'm having to text somebody on my separate text app or I'm having to do emails in and out that it just stays busy. Anyway, what I was going to say was that uh, the people that knew Kennedy said, for example, when he got word of a lot of things that was going on in Mississippi and down in, uh, down in, uh, let's see, not Mississippi, uh, yeah, Mississippi and Alabama and some of the southern states, which also was going on in the, the northern states too, it just wasn't as pronounced and the, the eyes of the nation wasn't on the North because the North was considered the good guys and the South was the bad guys. But anyway, there was a lot of uh, outward uh, racial hatred for black people in the South that have the uh, signs that says uh, whites only on fountains and colored here, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that was pretty predominant in the, in the South. Well, anyway, like I was telling you, he as in Kennedy, uh, was not for black people necessarily having an equal station in life as whites. He wasn't necessarily for him having a downward station, but he didn't think it was his job personally and or the job of the presidency to put them on an equal level in life. It was just to give them a fair opportunity he was into opportunity. So if two guys theoretically come in, one's white and one's black for a job and they were gonna work for him, the way I understand it was, he would give them both an equal shot at the job, okay? He might pay the black man less than he would pay the white man. So they get the job, they get the same benefits, but he might pay them less. And he didn't see them as the critical leadership of the country or any state. This is what I this is what I hear. But then on the other hand, I hear from Abraham Bolden the way I, I take it that 
he thought he was the best thing since sliced bread, that he was very forward thinking and that he was trying to help black men, which, which women, at that time, women were still all, oh, it didn't matter if you was a white woman, black woman, brown woman, yellow woman, they was all uh, backseat people for lack of a better exp expression. So even a black man had a far better chance of a lot of things than even a white woman. Sounds crazy, but you know, I talked to all the people of that time period, you know, from the late 50s through the early 60s. So, you know, I've, I've heard more than one thing. I didn't know Kennedy personally, you know. Uh, I knew people that had job in the military that dealt with Kennedy. I know some of them personally. I'm related to some. Others, I've heard the stories, you know, from taking Guantanamo Bay, uh, the Bay of Pigs, uh, how Guantanamo got set up, the way it was set up, so forth and so on. Uh, trying to think of what else to say. What else did... And this is again, it's about R.E. McKinney. Now, I don't know how I'm going to do it. And there was an actual book that come out. I think it was in 2003. I had taken over as a chief of police for a city. And right after that, I think it was my uncle that told me about this book that come out. And I bought it. Well, it had a very legible, some very legible paperwork that R.E. McKinney had done on the time, okay? And I, I had that book and somehow it got lost, misplaced, something, I can't remember the name of it. My uncle don't remember, you know, of course he's a lot older now too. He don't know, he don't remember uh, a lot of years ago. But anyway, I went online, I did everything I could to find R.E. McKinney or Robert E. McKinney that did these reports that would uh, maybe shed some additional information on the things I've said or show you some things that he had to say or what have you. Well, anyway, I found three three images that looked like it was copied out, out of a book. And one of them's, uh, I guess it's pretty readable, but not that readable. The other two, you'd really have to strain to make them out. And if I, and if I made a copy of that copy, I don't think nobody could sell it. But anyway, I'm gonna do the best I can as soon as I can figure out how to get that downloaded and then try and blow it up and maybe make two pages out of it. And uh, I just don't know how I'm doing. I might have to put it on the Sovereign Church of Jesus website. I put a lot of laws and facts about the government and how the, how the church oversees the government, but the government don't oversee the church. It's a one-way street being we the people or the people of the church. We, the people, are the one that oversee the government. So we have a secular government, but it operates under Christian morals, values, and ethics in general. But every year they push God more out of the public arena, and they push more of that out, and it becomes more secular, and the more secular it becomes, the more crooked it becomes. Do the correlation, do the math, do the arithmetic, but anyway, I do put a lot of stuff over there on that website. Uh, way before I ever did this YouTube channel, it's, it's been there for nine or 10 years, the website. Church has always been, but the uh, website uh, come around 2009, I think. I can't remember no more for sure. But anyway, it's been around eight or nine years maybe I can put it over there and I'll just say R.E. McKinney Kennedy Papers or R.E. McKinney slash Kennedy. I'll do something where y'all know where it is as soon as I can get time to do it. That might be a week. It might be three weeks. But I'll try and do it. If I, if I don't do it by three weeks, well, let's see. If I don't do it by January the 5th, uh, send me an email and remind me to put it there. Or you can look up R.E. McKinney uh, JFK assassination and, and go down and maybe you can find it for yourself but anyway the one I, I did on there was it was just telling the basics about it mentioned Kendi's name uh, Conley John Conley the uh, governor 
he gave some little basic information but I've seen some other papers that he wrote and I didn't see any of them in there uh, in other words uh, he still he brought from his house he brought from his house a little file that he had uh, from the Kennedy assassination uh, his original notes his original papers uh, 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 reports supplements not that there was a lot of them but it's probably 12 or 15 pages of notes and, and other information that he had uh, and a lot of them were on Dallas Police Department uh, uh, report forms that they had at the time and there was a lot of uh, little knick-knack stuff that you never seen on TV, never never seen in a magazine, never heard on radio. And I'm a pretty big candy buff, and I know a lot of things that people have said. And I guess, I guess, uh, over the years, different people have said, or they've come to believe that there were six, seven, eight, nine shooters, or however many. Well, the way... The way I, I recall it, you know, it was either six or seven, you know. I'm having to think back about this. A couple of people said, was it six or seven? You know, I, I, I'd, I'd have to sit down and do a diagram and have to really think about it. But if you had, if you had somebody in the school book depository, Oswald or anybody else, that could be one right there then the building that's back behind it that's a more straight on shot uh, that could be two you got one up uh, in in between the school book depository and the railroad tracks that's three you got at least one on the railroad track you got at least one underneath the railroad track uh, that's five you could even had more on the railroad track and a lot of people have come up with this theory that were the uh, I guess where the, the drain the drain lid is or the drain I, I don't remember if there's a drainage where water drains off into it and they thinking that, that somebody could be in that hole or there was actually a manhole or both so you know if you if if you get to, to counting if there is a drain down there there is a manhole there's there's three different overpasses there you know you could have three people in overpasses you could have somebody between the school book depository and uh, uh, railroad tracks you have three on top three in the bottom one over there one in the school book I don't know it could probably be seven or eight I don't know but I just I want to say I want to say he said six. You know, every once in a while, I just can't remember the specifics. Uh, I can remember the gist of it. I can remember pretty close, but not exact. In other words, I I couldn't I couldn't adhere or affirm on the good book. It's exactly six, or exactly seven. I don't know, or eight, or whatever. But I'm thinking, let's see, school book depository, the, the building behind it, between the railroad tracks and the place. One under there, one there, see. I, it probably had to be six. But anyway, whatever it was, at the time, in real time, let's say 24 to 72 hours, everybody put out that it was Oswald. Oswald did it. He was the lone gunman. Well, uh, J. Edgar Hoover, uh, Robert Kennedy, which was the uh, Attorney General, his brother. So you got the FBI, the, well, what you call it, then uh, LBJ, uh, the Dallas Police Chief, uh, Bill Decker, uh, the Secret Service personnel in a roundabout way between them and their protégés and their proxies, whatever you want to call them, they all come to a consensus within a few hours. T 
two, three, four hours, you know, you might as well say by the time the sun went down, they had a consensus that it's what Oswald, he's the single shooter, and we're going to make it fit because the people in the United States, believe it or not, at that time it was still a naive, very naive and very impressionable nation. And it was still an immature nation as to brutality, uh, craziness. I mean, that would still be crazy now, a president open, you know, driving through with an open thing and being shot in the head. That would still be traumatic to the country to this day as a whole. But you got to think back then time. They only had three TV uh, channels, you know, ABC, NBC, CBS. That was it. If you didn't see it there, you didn't see it. That was all that existed. And they were basically all AM radio stations. So you had no, no, or well, very little F then. And, uh, you know, uh, that limited, and they had uh, Dallas Morning News and Dallas Times Herald in Dallas. You had two newspapers there. And uh, Dallas wasn't half as big as it did. I mean, it's just had an explosion over the years uh, for, for a lot of different reasons. The economy's one, but, you know, and JFK issues and so forth and so on. But anyway, uh, if there's anything else that you want to know, ask me a specific question. I'll try and give you a specific answer or do another video. I don't think I really have much else to uh, give right now that I can think about, except that they agreed it was that, and they was going to make the story fit that narrative, and they've been doing it all these years. So the Dallas Police and Secret Service, the Dallas County Constable's Office, Dallas Sheriff's Office, the U.S. Secret Service, uh the military uh, protégés and so forth, they basically uh, said, we've got to soothe the nation. We've got to calm their fears. They can't believe that there's some body or bodies out there, some men or women that have shot and killed our president and they're still at large. But there was, and they knew it. They just didn't know who it was. Okay, and uh, my chief, and them agents, for lack of a better word, said it was the CIA. I know a lot of people in really, really uh, high places over my 39, they'd like a, like a, well, next, next month will be 40 years. Next month will be 40 years from when I started off. Okay. February, I think it's February the 5th. So I'm, let's see, December to January, two months, two months. I'm wrong. Sorry about that. Uh, but anyway, that'll be 40 years. And I come across a lot of wealth of information, a lot of people that know. And a lot of people's getting old and getting closer to their dying days. And they wanted to tell what they knew. And they wanted to tell it to somebody they liked. And they like me. I'm a likable guy. You know, I've, I've helped homeless people. I've helped a lot of hungry people. I've settled a lot of disputes and keep people out of jail. Uh, before I knew better, I used to write tickets. I, but even then, I wrote very, very few compared to everybody else. I mean, I probably wrote less than 25% of what everybody else wrote. And I, and a lot of times, I'd write for a headlight out or taillight out in a speeding ticket because they didn't get no points for it. And then if they come back with a fix-it ticket, they could fix it for like $5. You know? So I gave so many people so many chances uh, the other cops used to call, oh, you're a soft touch. You're a soft touch. I said, I love people. Our job ain't to hinder or harass people, but to help people. So I've been that way my whole life. You know, I tried to train my people. Look, give people benefit of the doubt. You know, what if, what if that's your brother, your sister, your mother, whatever? Just, you know, if somebody, if somebody uh, shot somebody in the face, hell yeah. We're going to chase them down like the dirty dog they are, okay? But, you know, if the speed limit's 35 and they're doing 50, let's don't, they don't need no three or four police cars out there surround them like they uh, raped a small child. Let's keep things in perspective here. If they raped a small child, we're going to hunt them down like the dog they are, okay? You know? But keep, keep it real. Just keep it real. Anyway, uh, if you can... Uh, give me a gift, a donation for me, my channel, 
or the church just right in there it's for you chief or it's for the church so i know where to go if you don't say then i just have to figure it out and i just divide it down the middle Anyway, PayPal accounts, Damond, D-A-Y-M-O-N-D, Damond, 4040 at yahoo.com, Damond4040 at yahoo.com. That's the PayPal account. Anything you can do, appreciate it. And like I said on my last video, that'll be it before this video. I was supposed to get my phone on Saturday, but I got it coming today, I think. And y'all put 150 towards it, the people that gave mainly two or three contributors mainly got that together and then i'm taking the other 150 match it with it to get 300 dollars and get the best cheaper phone i could get to keep these going until i can get better equipment and blase blase okay love y'all god bless you and have a great day bye bye